So how are you doing? You busy week at the moment, I guess. Oh, it's been pretty hectic. It's been uh, pretty mental at the moment. Uh, lots of PR going on. Um, I'm YouTube channel. I'm still trying to keep up with doing editing and stuff for that. Traveling up between Bournemouth and London. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Busy. It's pretty busy. Yes. Plus, a wedding in two weeks as well. <laughs> yeah, it's actually the wedding is on the uh, the date of release. So. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have planned it could you no no that, that was yeah hmm that, yeah. yeah so super super busy <laughs> yeah crazy oh well well so yeah you've you've uh that, yeah you've ended up on a on a new tv show on the day of your wedding which is uh which is one way to celebrate i guess <laughs> exactly i mean i'm not allowed to use my phone or anything on the wedding day <laughs> my my fiance has banned anyone from watching it she's like no it's about me it's about <laughs> our relationship it's nothing to do with greg and his show and that's completely fair enough <laughs> yes no absolutely should be about that that that's good um so yes, your new show you're you're joining is uh, called Class. It's a spin-off from Doctor Who. Do you want to sort of just give an explanation about um, about the show? Sure, it's probably uh, a good place to start. Good place to start. Class is uh, obviously it's in the Doctor Who universe spin-off set at Coal Hill School, now Coal Hill Academy. Um, yep. but, yeah, yeah, just bringing it into modern day privatization of schools and all that. Um, it's it's about for uh, kids in, in sixth form, uh, me being one of them, and uh, Miss Miss Quill is one of our teachers. And basically, um, with all the Archon energy, with the Doctor having been there from uh, this is part of the Doctor Universe since the first episode back in back in sixty three, um, I think. Um, so yeah. it's a, it's it's it means a lot to the the universe to the whole story. Um, but yeah, with all his activity, he basically things are breaking through time and space to come and get us. Uh, so it's about how we react to that um, and how we deal with trying to save the world and trying to have relationships, kind of do exams, <laughs> you know, try and be a normal teenager. That's 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 class for you, essentially. Yeah, cool. And uh, uh, Peter Capaldi shows up in the first episode to sort of help move things along, which is good. Um, it, what I loved the, on the trailer, they actually put this into the trailer. Was I mean, it's it's essentially it's a sort of young adult show. Yes, is, is yeah, the completely. It's pitched at, I, and they, right at the end of the trailer, they actually kind of mention a bunch of the other young adult shows out there. There's a exactly. reference to the Hellmouth in Buffy. There's like yeah. Vampire Diaries, Once Upon a Time, which I thought was brilliant. Um, I, I the, love that reference. I think well, yeah. It it just it just brings a bit of self awareness to the show because yeah you've you've got to realise that that it's 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 paying homage to these these shows um, these amazing shows and we're just to 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 make reference to it is just to say hey look we know what we're doing we we know the sort of demographic we're trying to go for and it's just it's quite it's quite funny and it's self aware so I really like that. Yeah, no, I I thought that was fantastic. That was that such a clever thing to do. Um, you've got uh, Patrick Ness is the writer for it. Yes, he's a, a young adult writer in his own right as well as mm-hmm. an author. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting about Class is the fact that he's written every single episode as well. Yeah. Which <laughs> you just don't. I don't get know how with... he did it. I don't know how no. he did it. The workload no. he was under. Wow. But anyway, yeah. yeah. I, and it's uh, you don't tend to get that with TV shows very much. It's mm. it's very rare. There's, I think Peaky Blinders I think works that way, but there's there's yeah. very few shows that that run that way. Do you think that's helped with uh, the way the narrative is struck together, structured together for the show? I think so. I mean, having um, the creator on board, obviously from start to finish, I think it's going to make it a lot more cohesive. Um, it can only help, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, especially with Patrick's writing. It's just so nice to work with. And he's been such an amazing showrunner. He's been inspirational and supportive the whole way through. Um, so it's really nice having that stability in the show. And I think, I hope you'll see that uh, throughout from episode one to episode eight. There's a real nice arc and cohesion to it. Yeah, it, I, I, I'm looking forward to 
seeing the whole thing because I've only seen the trailer at the moment. I haven't seen mm. anything else of it. So, uh, but you... neither have I. To be fair, I haven't seen anything yeah. else. <laughs> I want to see it. Yeah, you could have thought they would have shown it to you by now. Oh, uh, you know. Um, you, uh, obvious question: Were you a fan of Doctor Who before you got involved with it? Interestingly enough, um, I consider myself a big old geek nerd any of the terms you want to throw out there i've been a big gamer since um oh god since i can remember since about how, when did uh, ocarina of time come out back in 98 i think yes so around about then probably maybe even earlier maybe 96 actually was it that early yeah well yeah. from then on i've been the biggest bloody gamer i uh, yeah as you know i've got my own youtube channel I was, yeah yeah um um so I surprised I'd never really watched Doctor Who before coming into this show. My, <laughs> it was just it just seemed right up my street, but I just never had a, really a reason to do it. None of my friends and my friend groups watched it, so I'd never really uh, got into it. But having now had a reason and excuse to watch it, I'm de- I'm working my way through it, and yes, I'm definitely a Doctor Who fan now. So did you uh, start at New Who or have you yes. been back and watched the old? I've not got back, I've not got back to <laughs> Old Who yet. I'm going to one day, I'm going to make sure I do watch it. It's on my bucket list to watch yeah. Old Who. But no, I'm still yes. uh, working my way through New Who at the moment. Yes, there's quite a lot to get through in Old Who. So, so yes, you know, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> a very different structured show as well. It's uh, it's very cool. I'm, I'm old enough to remember it the first time around. So. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't look it. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, very, very, very welcome. Kind. No, I'm most definitely old enough to remember the first time around. Yeah. Um, so have you have you got um, a, a favourite Doctor from the New Who stuff? Yes, I do. And however much I love Peter Capaldi, because he's a genius and I love everything about him. Um, the iconic Doctor for me, just the one that when I think of the Doctor, I think David Tennant. Yeah. It's just... I don't know what it is. Maybe it was because that was when it, I was most aware of it growing up. Um, maybe that's why. But I just seem to think of David Tennant when I think of the Doctor. So, I yeah, he did. Uh, he was the one that, although he didn't launch it to bring it back, he was the one that really put his stamp on that role. I think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, definitely. And uh, he's one of my favorite episodes, being one of the obvious ones, Blink. Him yeah. And, him in that. So. Um, the Weeping Angels is pretty, it's pretty special. Yeah, it, it's really quite an amazing uh, episode. That you can see why Stephen Moffat kind of ended up a showrunner yeah, after, after writing those. <laughs> completely. Yeah, no, definitely David Tennant. How did you get involved with Class then? So, oh, back in October of last year, 2015, um, I got an audition through uh, through my agent and. Um, it was all top secret. I don't think we knew it was uh, related to Doctor Who at this point. Um, just knew it was cool. I don't think we even had the title at that point. I'm just going on for this audition. And um, I didn't have any information on my character or anything for Charlie. Um, and I first thought um, he was he had um, Asperger's syndrome. Right. As I first thought of him, um, which was really interesting. And I, so I came at it from that sort of perspective. Um, uh, being a bit uh, not quite understanding social norm- normities and stuff. Um, so when I found out he was an alien, which <laughs> then was being released in the trailer, but when I found out he was an alien, um, that was like, oh, okay, that's all I can see yeah, why now. That makes that's sense now, yeah, yeah. It's coming at things from a different perspective. Um, so, yeah, that was back in October. I didn't hear anything for like a good few months. I think it was then in February of 2016 that I, I thought I'd just not got it or anything. I just yeah, yeah. moved on. But then I got a call saying, oh, yeah, I would like to see you back. And I'm, oh, okay, right. I went back, did another one. And then I had to fly out to LA to, for pilot season for six weeks. And <laughs> sod's law, in my first week, I get another call saying, you need to fly back to, uh, to London yeah. to, uh, to do a final audition. So I flew back, went straight to audition. I had like, a ton of coffee and coke in my in my system <laughs> and so I, was, I was kind of buzzing and kind of jet lagged and a bit all over the shop but yeah. i did the audition flew straight back to um back to la and i found out a few weeks later that i got the job so wow it was a, it was a bit of a roller coaster it was oh, amazing though 
So you were over in LA doing pilots over there as well. Yeah, I was just seeing what because I think that's something quite a lot of actors yeah. do. They just go out and have a feel of pilot season yeah. and what all the you know, like Hollywood um, auditions are like. Yes. So that was a completely different experience, yes. but uh, very valuable. Yeah. Crazy, crazy time over there when they do that. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, it was mental. So. It was- yeah, so that could have been interesting. If you'd landed something over there, you'd ended up kind of bouncing backwards and forwards between the two for the next foreseeable. Yeah, well, I'm not ruling it out one day. Hopefully we'll get something out in LA. That would yes, be nice. Yeah. And uh, maybe next year, yeah. you never know. Who knows? Weather's a lot nicer over there. So <laughs> It is. It's too hot for me. I'm a Brit through and through. I love the cold. I love the dreary, rainy. I, I love uh, England. So. <laughs> yeah, not... It's too warm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I like the LA weather because it's not quite as oppressive as the as like Florida or those sort of areas, you know. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, Florida's, Florida's like crazy oppressive. Wall though, of isn't heat it? that hits you. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> no, LA is quite nice. It's like a really hot sunny sunny summer like so, UK day all yeah, the time, just, just all the time. I <laughs> constantly I couldn't move out there because I I miss weather, which they just don't have. It's not a concept. Yes, so do I. <laughs> I love the weather. I love the the winter and the the autumn and all that. But it is beautiful, and a lot of people love it for good reasons. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't be more English now unless we were drinking tea. Uh... <laughs> should we get some tea and some biscuits? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> should we move on? <laughs> um, so this this wasn't your first uh, sort of big acting gig because you also worked on Mr. Selfridge as well. I um, did yeah. How was working with Jeremy Piven? Oh, Jeremy Piven was um was great. It was my first role coming out of um, of a drama school, yeah. and so, and I studied musical theatre, oh, right. so I wasn't even an act. I wasn't even an actor, yeah, yeah. technically. And um, so, coming into the show and having someone like Jeremy Piven sort of uh, give me some guidance and uh, support was really beneficial. I, I can't thank him enough for that. Um, so yeah, he was he was absolutely great to work with. He was really nice to me, really lovely yeah. guy. How did you get the acting bug? To be fair, since I was a kid, I always thought in the back of my head, like, I want to be on TV. I want to be a TV actor. And then just as I got older and older, I went into musical theatre, um, and it just like oh, it just kind of faded away. Um, but the the part of musical theatre I think is is acting. I think any sort of performance has to come from a, a point of truth and. And uh, you, the acting needs to be up to up to a certain standard, um, especially in musical theatre. So I've always had that sense of trying to make any part I I, I take on as real and as truthful as possible. Um, I'm quite naturalistic as an actor anyway, which is not particularly good for musical theatre. You have to be a bit bigger. You have to be a bit on stage. You have to come out uh, a bit more than you normally would. So it just kind of TV always just seemed to fit me, and getting a TV role was I was just exceedingly lucky, right place, right time, and um, um, it's yeah. TV. I absolutely love it now. It's just a dream job. I I can't I'm can't be thankful enough. Honestly, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> What's been your most interesting experience since you started working either on class or just generally acting? Mm, interesting experience. I've got to, no, I've got to say it was um, the, my first scene that I ever did on Mr. Selfridge, I think, coming in, because the sets on Mr. Selfridge were absolutely incredible. Just the beautiful shop floors. It was coming onto set, having not, I didn't have a clue what I was meant to be doing, really. I just had the <laughs> scripts, had my scene for the day, and I was like, okay, right, I've learned my lines. I'll walk on. It's this huge, bloody set, beautiful. We do a little rehearsal, great, 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 and then they sort of, they, they shout, okay, um, uh, crew rehearsal. Like a hundred people just like swarm in from the, the woodwork, <laughs> all sorts of people. Cameras start popping up and doing this, and I was, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been quite as scared as I was in that moment. Um, but yeah, that first scene I think will stick with me forever. It was it was only a small like half a page scene and I said one line but yeah <laughs> I think watching it back I'm like this <laughs> <laughs> the, re- yes, the, re- <laughs> <laughs> the reality that you're suddenly on a TV show hits you in one guy. completely oh it's it's surreal it really is <laughs> well um what would you say the best piece of advice somebody's given you is best piece of advice oh these are some tricky questions I have to think hard <laughs> um best piece of advice I'd say is to, yeah, Ron Cook on Mr. Selfridge 
told me, um, basically, don't let what other people think influence you too much. It's being in front of a lot of people, um, having a lot of people criticize what you're doing and having opinions on what you're doing. I mean, you sign up for it. It's part of the job. And yeah, yeah. It's absolutely fine. It's great to have that feedback and that critique. But um, to know even when there, because there, there's a subsection of the internet and people that are always going <laughs> to be critical, yes. more critical than others. Um, and just to not let that affect you. It's, it's um, to know in yourself that you're there for a reason. Yeah. And hopefully that reason's good enough. So, yeah, it's just have a bit of faith in yourself. I think that's a really, I don't think that can apply to anyone. Yeah. You have faith in yourself and be true to who you are. It's, it's pretty, yeah. pretty all round good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we went, you mentioned earlier, you also have a YouTube channel, uh, which is Euphoric. Yes. Um, so how did, how did that come about? Was it just the fact that you were a huge gamer and thought, yeah. oh, no, I'll do a YouTube channel? It came around just when I'd finished drama school. I was just about to go into Mr. Selfridge. Um, I thought, I don't have that many gaming friends. I don't have that much interaction with people just because musical theatre tends not to have a lot of gamers in it for some reason. Um, <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I've been watching a lot of YouTube recently. I've been really enjoying it. I want to just make a channel and just see if I can have a bit of fun doing it, maybe make some friends, um, yeah. and just share my love of gaming. So that's what I did. I, I built my own PC. I had no idea what I was doing. I just <laughs> did some YouTube videos. I was like, okay, I'll buy those things and try and put it together. Made my own PC. Um, made the channel. It's, I hope it's gotten steadily better. It's it's really just me messing about and being a, being a total ass. <laughs> and I have fun. And yeah, I've just, I think I just hit 1,000 subscribers. So I'm... It's really small, really personal, but um, it's yeah, it's, it's all I've ever wanted it to be. And if it's ever something bigger, great. Yeah, yeah, that's it's great that you're you're doing stuff like that. There. Do you? What sort of advice would you have for somebody that wants to get into kind of acting or presenting or or you know that sort of stuff? As, yeah, as, performing you, side. Yeah, um, it's. A tricky one it's feast or famine basically yeah. and um it's either a wonderful crazy intense life with a lot of good things coming along or it's completely the opposite side of it it's yeah. my advice would be go into it if you if you really do have that passion for it you've got to have that passion for wanting to perform and put a bit of your heart out there in front of people to see um, it's not for a lot of people, but if you do it, go for it. It's the most rewarding career I can think of. But for me, at least, it's just incredibly rewarding. Um, and getting into it, just uh, do something every day. Choose one yeah. one thing every day that furthers your goal. So um, whether that's going to an acting class or whether that's contacting someone or whether it's writing up the CV or whatever, all that sort of stuff. Do one thing every day. And um, I think that that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was talking to, um, I don't know if you watched the show Z Nation, but... Um, no, I haven't seen it, no. Zombie show. Mm. The, Keith Allen, who's the lead actor on that show, basically said the problem is that people look at acting to want to go into it and they only see the good bits. They yeah. see, you know, they see the Hollywood acting and, you know, the big houses and think, oh, well, you know, it's all glamorous. And then the, what they don't see is the waiting out for five hours on a set. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stuck it's... in a little trailer. And... Yeah. And, and the thing is, even to get to that point, it's, it's crazy, crazy unlikely. It's... Yeah. For every one actor working, there's another 50 that aren't, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic career if, if yes. you can get the work. But yes, it's, it's something you really, really want to have to do. <laughs> yes, it is. And I've just been exceedingly lucky. I really have. And I can't be thankful enough. I'm, I'm blessed. I really am. It's great uh, when you see um, talented people land on decent TV shows, and you know, hopefully this, hopefully class goes really, really well. It's looking like it's. it's hopefully, hopefully so, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, I've got faith in it. I've got, I've got a lot of faith in the show. 
yeah, I mean, even from just the little trailer, it looks very funny. So I'm, I'm got high hopes for it. I'm sure it'll yeah. do well. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's uh, two questions we yeah. always ask people mm. in interviews, um, because obviously we're a TV show site. So first thing is, what TV shows are you watching at the moment? Oh, okay. Well, I obviously just finished watching Stranger Things. Right. Yes. Um, my friends just recommended me to start watching Black Sails. Black Flag? Black Sails. Yes. Right? Yes. The pirate actually, drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't started watching that yet. And what was it? There's another show that I'm... Oh, I just finished um, Rick and Morty, the season two of Rick and Morty. And I can't believe it's taken me this long you to know, get onto I... it. Yeah, I've still not got to it yet, and but everybody oh, tells me it's brilliant. You yeah. need to watch it. It's just genius, absolutely genius, right up your street. I'm sure it's yes. Oh no, it's it's it that, that has brought a smile to my heart. That show, yeah, that's a genius yeah. show. Yeah, and what was the other question? Sorry. Um. Yeah, the second question is yeah. if you had the opportunity opportunity to work yeah. on any show, past, present, or future, what show would it be? Oh my goodness. Okay. Any TV show? Well, okay. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw out Doctor Who. I want to be on Doctor Who. That would be sweet. <laughs> that that's got a distinct possibility. I would um, <laughs> that would be nice. Um, aside from that, no. I'm just gonna stick with Doctor Who because that's that's <laughs> that's plausible. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's plausible. You do not no higher goals for it, like Walking Dead or. <laughs> Actually, I've never seen The Walking Dead. I watched yeah. series one, and yeah. I think I'm in the minority there as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I tell you what, I, I, okay, I tell you what, Family Guy or American Dad? <laughs> give, me a, give me a voice part on one of those. A voice part on one of those. Yeah. Yes, please. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's doable. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Um, before we go, I have got a set of quick questions. Yeah. Which we can run through. So, like, quick answers. See, first thing see that comes you, to my mind. First key th- thing that comes to mind. So we'll see how these go. Cool. They get Bring progressi- on. They get progressively sillier as we get through. Fantastic. So- <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so uh, start off. What was the third thing you did when you woke up this morning? Um. Oh, I don't know. It put my foot in the bath? Where did that come from? <laughs> Put my foot in the bath. I actually did that though. I did. I did just put my foot in the bath to see if it was wet. <laughs> really weird. So. Okay. Right. Uh, something. What's something new you learnt in the past week? Um, I learnt that um, weddings are actually super bloody stressful. <laughs> That's what I learnt. Um, yeah. That was. There was something that came up this week that threw me completely. <laughs> it's all fine. It's all good. Weddings are stressful. Window or aisle seat? Uh, aisle. Wow, uh, I, thought, I thought I said window there, but I oh. uh, Beatles or Stones? Beatles. Person living or dead you'd like to grab a drink with? Oh, give me Tom Hanks. And what would you be drinking? Oh, cup of tea, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what is a hidden talent of yours? Um, I'm uh, pretty good at uh, parkour, free running. Really? Yeah, Interesting. I did that for a few years. I mean, I'm, I'm not amazing or anything, but like, I I'm no, still but... like to keep that up. It, it, very interesting. Yeah. Um, What's one thing you couldn't live without? My wife. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't an actor, what would you be? Um, I'd probably be in biochemistry, randomly. Right. Okay. Um, that's the other thing I was planning to do at, at uh, A-levels. I did biology and chemistry, and I did pretty well at those. So. What day in your life would you love to relive? The time I engaged to... Uh, I proposed to my, my wife. That was a pretty special day. I was... Ah. It was, cool. yeah. Actually, there's a video on my YouTube channel if you want to watch it. Oh, of okay. Me I, sh- I shall go and have a look at that later. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, that was a lovely day. If you could visit any period in history, when would you choose? I'd go back to um, there's a book I read. I can't remember what it's called. Back when I was a kid, it was be, actually be around sort of like the 13th, 14th century. Um, right. Sort of, if I'm crazy thinking that sort of around the plague sort of time. <laughs> But that all, that book really intrigued me as to that period in time and seeing like all the, the villages, really sort of um, fantasy sort of s- setting. That that feels like fantasy to me, that, that era. So, <laughs> Black Plague. Mm. On a scale of one to ten, how well would you fit in? Oh, absolutely not. One. I'm <laughs> out of... No, I, I need my technology, man. I need... Yeah. Oh, 
I love I love my uh, my my laptop. <laughs> I'm with you there. In your opinion, what's the sexiest accent? Oh, Australian. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. What's the funniest sounding non funny word? Um, spatula. <laughs> Um, how long can you last without your phone? I'd like to say a day, but probably not even that. <laughs> Hopefully a day, otherwise your wife's going to kill you. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the strangest gift you've ever received? I got um, a, a note once from a fan. It was really sweet, but it was kind of strange. <laughs> right. a little bit. It was sweet, but yeah, no, I won't go any further than that. Um, if you could give your teenage self advice what would it be it would be to be more empathetic okay yeah I, and, yeah and if he could see you now how impressed would he be um without blowing my own horn too much i'd i'd be very happy with <laughs> where i've ended up so good if your life was a children's book what would the title be uh the boy that didn't have a clue what he was doing <laughs> pretty much what, uh, what's the favorite thing you get to do in your job being able to play around with emotions and characters is really that's, that's a really fun bit of the job really cool. exciting what one mystery in the world would you like to know the answer to oh it well whether whether aliens exist yeah Good yeah call. if we came to your home and looked inside your refrigerator what would i find oh pepsi max all over the place <laughs> i love pepsi max if I gave you an elephant, where would you hide it? Oh, <laughs> I'd hide it um, under my bed. I've got a pretty big bed. Okay, and would you rather be attacked by 12 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Horse-sized duck, because I could tame it. And I could make it <laughs> my, my companion. Excellent. <laughs> the free-running thing fascinates me. <laughs> that, that yeah, was... it's just something I did when I was, I think I was about 13, 12 or 13. This is when it sort of was just starting to build up a bit of momentum coming over from France. Um, me and my mates did it at school. We literally go out, on the, in, out of the inside, um, out of the classroom and just like jump over little walls and uh, climb up to the roofs and stuff. And we always get told off by the teachers. <laughs> um, but yeah, that progressed and progressed. And we just, it got to the point where it was getting dangerous and I had to make a decision. Right. Yes. It was like starting to clear big gaps, roof to roof. Um, doing some stupid flips and stuff off things and it got to the point where I was going into dancing and I was thinking look if, if I injure myself properly I'm not going to be able to go into the career I want to go into yes um, that's... so I had to scale back a bit so now I just keep it up every whenever I go out I'll just flip off something or I'll climb up something and jump off it but yeah you better hope some of the stump people on class aren't listening otherwise <laughs> I know oh I got told off a few times I was <laughs> on set I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing oh. <laughs> oops all right um thank you for coming on and talking to me it's been an absolute pleasure yeah it has been thank you so much for having me good luck with class and uh, good luck with the wedding as well and thank you very much hope that all goes goes well your wife's a fantastic dancer by the way i was watching videos of her earlier oh well okay yeah. she is i think she is i think she's a pretty pretty talented girl yeah but thank you very much class starts when what's the air date i did write it 22nd down. of october so 22nd that's of october. yeah i shall look forward to seeing you on my tv screen soon thank you very much <laughs> good luck with everything cheers, cheers dave cheers bye bye, bye.